Let me try this. Yeah, so today I'll talk about how our food is being poisoned without us knowing and how it might be responsible for the rise of modern chronic diseases. And so I'm talking about not only chronic diseases, but also outbreak like coronavirus and stuff like multi-drug resistant bacteria, which, which are very common nowadays. So the statistic is, I think the statistic I looked at from yesterday was that one out of three, every chicken that you buy from the supermarket have at least a strain of multi-drug resistant bacteria. What Which is, is pretty crazy. Multi-drug resistant bacteria, what is that? So, it means they resistant to multiple types of antibiotics. So once you get infected with those bacteria, there's no way for the doctor to treat you because all the available treatments in the hospital are not effective. Hmm. And the cause, the cause for that resistance in those bacteria is that we've been using so much antibiotics. So it's just evolution for the bacteria. The bacteria just evolved to become more and more resistant to antibiotics, multiple types of antibiotics. Because we use so much antibiotics in medicine but also in farming and industry to keep our food supply grow really fast. So you want a fast growing population of chicken or cow. So I'm talking about the greedy food industry in the farming industry where they put in a lot of antibiotics into these type of animals to keep them healthy, quote unquote healthy but actually, actually have like a huge effect on medicine because now you have a ton of bacteria that become multi-drug resistant. So I guess my question is, with me unassumingly consuming this, these, this food that has antibiotics in it, so these chickens are given these drugs to help them resist infection and all these other types of things, whatever we in captivity. So what you're saying is that when I consume this chicken, I'm also uh -huh. consuming the antibiotics that they're putting into these chickens, which is creating some sort of resistance against diseases. And then these, I'm not sure how, I have no idea at a, like a fundamental level how a disease works, whatever, but what you're saying is, if I ingest more and more of these antibiotics, we're going to get stronger and stronger bacterial infections. Is that, is that how that works? Yes. So it's both way. So you both get the antibiotics from the chicken, but you also get an extra, like a bonus <laughs> of bacteria from the chicken by contam contaminating the chicken. Those bacteria because they've been treated with so much antibiotics in the farm or in, in those crowded cages, they also become super resistant to a lot of types of antibiotics. Hmm. But once you, are, once you consume those meat, you also consume the antibiotics. So the bacteria that already inside your body, they also become multi-drug resistant so if you get any random type of bacteria maybe from the dirt or um, like from a wound like but you got like a random infection usually medicine can treat that but now that you have a bunch of resistant and you build up all of these antibiotics in your body and you create this environment for these bacteria to become 
multi-drug resistance, you create this quote-unquote super bug that we never seen before. Hmm. Because basically you create two types of environment. The first one is your own body. And the second one is the body of the animals that you consume. These type of environment have a ton of antibiotics inside it. So it creates a super great environment for these super bugs who can evolve to be resistant to all of the antibiotics that medicine has created. Does it make sense? It's, there's so much that I don't know. Like, uh, I guess, like, I understand if I get a cut. Well, like, yeah. I, I guess, like, I'm, the thing that I know is I get a tetanus shot every 10 years, right? Like, that's the, the thing that you always get checked in your physical. They're like, okay, when was the last time we got a tetanus shot? Because if you don't, apparently, if you step on the nail or something, you can get, like, a really bad infection. I don't know the lethality of tetanus, but it's pretty bad. It is interesting. Yeah. That, like we're these environments we're trying to make them more secure we're trying to prevent these chickens from getting sick but as we do that we now have to overcome the obstacles of extremely adaptable bacteria yeah it's kind of kind of, kind of counterintuitive because you would think if you make the, the food or your body cleaner that would help with removing bacteria, it does help with removing bacteria. So imagine you have, let's simplify the numbers. Imagine you have a hundred individuals of bacteria in this environment, for example, your chicken or your own body, and you put in this antibiotic you remove 99% on 99 individuals of the bacteria, but it's only take one individual who survives this antibiotic, and that in in individual can self divide and create a new population of resistant bacteria in that environment. And next time you you have this population coming back you put in the same antibiotic, it's not going to work because now you have a hundred resistant bacteria versus you not using antibiotic as much. You still have a hundred bacteria, but they've now, been, they've now been trained by this mass of bacteria. Yeah, this is crazy. Gavin, doesn't this just like sound like it, it, this sounds like hacking, doesn't it? It sounds like the whole security paradigm of like trying to make everything secure. Like, oh, we now have this firewall added here. And it's like, okay, but you know, you're all using the same password for whatever through this VPN, but you gave access to the, through the firewall and all you have to do is find this one thing. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this, Gavin? I think, um, I think the, way, the way antibiotics is used in medicine is stupid because doctors are afraid of being sued. So they would rather give you a ton of antibiotics instead of risking the one in a million chance you die from this bacteria population. You know what I mean? So as soon as the baby come out of his womb, his mother's womb, already given antibiotics. So, so I feel like this could lead to addiction in some, in some way, shape, or form, like addiction to the antibiotics and um, those type of foods, right? I'm sorry? So this could lead to like addiction to certain foods because of the antibiotics that are being ingested by these animals, if I'm not mistaken? Are you saying allergy? No, I'm saying more so along the lines of... Um, the more you eat, the more you want to consume. Like, does that make sense from a perspective of these antibiotics allowing uh, 
some type of induced heightened sense of um, feeling in your body. Um, would, would that occur in a regular um, animal that we digest or is it just uh, related to um, disease and infection and uh, people not these types of um, and just these types of uh, foods. So, so far, I think that's an interesting thought. Um, so far, what we know about antibiotics is it stops the living, the key living process of bacteria. So that's the main function of antibiotics that it stops the cellular processes in the bacteria from working. So that's why bacteria die. But the problem is when you have too much antibiotics, you kill you kill all of the good bacteria and you also kill like you wipe out ninety nine percent of the population of bacteria in an environment. But you leave out you leave out the one percent. So that one percent is resistant to that antibiotic. So the cellular in these bacteria still working fine. But now that they're the only survivor, they don't have any competition from everyone else. So they just keep multiplying. And once they multiply to a certain level, that's become dangerous, whether it's in your food or whether that is in your own body. Because now you only have one type of bacteria that have no competitors at all in this environment. And once you get this bacteria proliferating in your body, it's really bad for your body because it's kind of take advantage of, or it's kind of trying to control your body uh, processes. And yeah, you also it makes have me an infection. It makes me think of like ransomware <laughs> from the <laughs> perspective of uh, being able to take over a host and. Uh, yeah we lock all their files or I, I guess the new type of ransomware where they grab all of your files away from you and leave one or two there for you to have like I think that's pretty cool right like yeah the, there's this version of Ragnarok which is like the most like the most awesome name for ransomware too because I'm, I'm like I love Thor I think that's great <laughs> I'm like Ragnarok that's sick but it's like you're right Ransomware is becoming ever more pervasive and it's it's only getting worse because people are getting desperate. It's like, okay, you know, we are encrypting things and we're gonna release data, but it used to be encrypt like one federal office, right? Now it's like you could encrypt a portion of uh, AWS. Why <laughs> why work why work in a government? after a corporation like AWS or GCP or uh, Azure, why would you waste your time on such a small fish? Make a big ransomware that can really cause chaos and then it can actually get real. Yeah, you know, um, uh, University of California, San Francisco just paid like $1.2 million or something like that to uh, uh, whoever was hosting a ransomware uh, recently, like within the last week because they took all of their files and they needed them back. So I thought, I think this is pretty, pretty relevant, yeah. especially in that sense. Like, cause we're building this cloud infrastructure that's apparently super secure. But like Wilson's saying, we're trying to make, we're trying to inject antibiotics in all this food to make these animals very safe and, you know, reduce the risk of getting some sort of infection. Well, the, the paradigm, the parallel between these two things is that all it takes is one vulnerability to break into cloud infrastructure. All it takes is one bacteria to evolve from these antibiotics. And then what you have is it's like, it's spread. Yeah. You know, hey guys, yeah. uh, so, someone asked a really interesting question earlier, which was, can eating foods with antibiotics actually make someone fatter or something like that right so i think that's a really inter interesting question uh wilson was talking about 
so what Wilson was saying was how, you know, if, if, if you get antibiotics, it wipes out the bacteria already in your gut and, 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 and then one grows back. And so the population is not as diverse as it was. It becomes like a different population. And there's, right. there's studies where you take a mouse, you re replace its gut bacteria and different bacteria once it has different bacteria, the same mouse will become like fat and obese. So that's so that's one experiment. That's like some proof that that's possible. And then so some something else that's interesting is that in in livestock in like farms, um, some from some farmers actually feed antibiotics to animals because it makes the it's a growth promoter. Like when when the at, when the beef get antibiotics, they actually grow bigger. I'm not sure how exactly that happens, but that's like an. I think that's, that's affect because you're affecting the bacterial population, so it affecting the growth of the the animal. Yeah. Sure. So to go back to certain bacteria population would promote certain host processes, so like increase inducing the growth in the host, whereas some third other bacteria would suppressing the growth of the host to make it thicker. Yeah. Sure. So like, I think, it, I think it does make sense that, and I think it's definitely possible that, you know, antibiotics in, in, in chicken wings or whatever could make, could make someone that eats the chicken wings fatter than uh, if they ate chicken wings without antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that, that, I, I think that has been shown in certain model organism but we know that yeah if you change the bacterial population yes you're gonna change the host um, go back to the gut transplant the fecal transplant that Obi talked about so you can have fecal material from a fat mouse transferred to a skinny mouse and that skinny mouse after being transferred uh, that fecal material getting fat even though it's consumed the same amount of food it's just the body processes just become controlled by the bacteria and that really important in regulating growth yeah so yeah I think another thing with Beside the growth inducing effect is that we we get our environment contaminated with a bunch of multi drug resistant bacteria. These super bugs, which are super dangerous because there's no treatment for it. So once you get bacterial infection with these things, you ba it basically a death sentence. Because yeah. doctors cannot cure you, cannot treat. There's no available treatment. The and these things have become more and more common. What's, a, what's analogous in cybersecurity is if you ransomware the cloud, you don't know if you're locking up medical systems. There are hospitals yeah. that are using web services right now. They're using it to, you know, either have it difficult to use, which like lines of messages for data that's coming in. Maybe it's patient records, right? Like that's, that's one thing. But um, what's happening now in technology from Gavin's last talk, we heard about wearable technology, right? The next move is obviously wearable medical technology. So your dialysis machine is no longer, you know, a machine. It's actually a thing that's embedded inside of you. And it's wirelessly. It's like okay, so you ransomware something like that. You could potentially ransom. I mean, things. Technology will get to the point where there will be like critical, life-saving critical equipment will be inside of people's bodies that's going to be connected to the internet. That's a very weird thing for me, like someone to say right now. But I don't even think it's outside of our our lifetime. Yeah, it's possible. Let's move on to. Other type of food, for example, Obi was talking about beef. So, beef you have problem with bacteria 
infection too, but you also have, so what I found yesterday was some of the steaks, they tenderize the, the steak by just punching holes into them. And that introduced bacteria inside, in the inside of the steak. And you can have multi-drug resistant bacteria inside your steak instead of just on the surface. Because they punching a, a bunch of holes in the steak to tenderize them. But if they don't put that label on the steak. So if you don't cook, if you have, if you buy those tenderized steaks and you cook them kind of raw on the inside, you're going to get those multi-drug resistant bacteria and possibly die from it. So it's pretty crazy that some beef products that are tenderized are not labeled. Um, so that's about a steak. And then the fish, the fish, I, I gave you guys the fish video. So if you guys watched it, farm fish has the greatest amount of chemicals inside them compared to wild, wild caught fish. What was the but fish? The tricky part. Um, bacteria, what is the fish? Bacteria in the fish, but I think more, what more concerning is industrial chemical because these fish also raise in crowded environments and they gave they given a bunch of antibiotics so yes they're going to have multi-drug resistant bacteria in them and then you eat sushi from it <laughs> so you're going to get fresh bacteria into your body um, you also have a bunch of growth promoting chemical in the fish and then you have those growth promoting chemical inside your body so your body kind of fucked up because you have a bunch of chemicals that your body becomes confused because these chemicals look a lot like the natural chemical like the hormones the growth hormones in your body or the sex hormones in your body so you introduce a ton of these chemicals inside your body and your body becomes confused. It doesn't know what to do. It's, it never seen this much chemical flush into it before in million million years of evolution. Never seen this. So you kind of alter the tra trajectory of how the body evolves to function just by eating these products. Mm. And then you also have a bunch of, I think what they said was dioxin, which was a pesticide. And its effect, it can create birth defects and all the type of stuff, infertility. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty alarming. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to pass on some, some horrible like infection to my children unknowingly. I feel like. So my question is, do you think all this is coming from innocent? I'm sorry, my internet kind of went out there. Do you think all this started from like just people wanting to um, prevent diseases? No, I think it's coming from is profit driven because you want to create a lot of food for a large population with a very low price. So how do you do that? You have to do shortcut and once you do shortcut yes you reduce the price but then at the expense of the consumers mm -hmm. the consumers don't know about it the general population don't know about it because a lot of these information are withdrawn from the consumers so the government the government is run, is run by all of these industry people the government is supposed to regulate these industry but actually being run by <laughs> the same industry is supposed to regulate. Oh God. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. Like the example in that video was like the, the fish minister, ministry person, woman was actually owning fish farms. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the person is supposed to be regulating the, 
like the toxic she's regulating her own business it's like so what i see in capitalism is like the it's very similar to uh, a monarchy because monarchy you have king and queen but now capitalism similar to monarchy because it's being ruled by industry being ruled by capitalists yeah people who run these companies these huge organizations and they the government is puppets to these huge uh big food company and big farmers and yeah yeah pretty makes, crazy it makes sense that they'd be connected it, you know because it, it seems like you can maintain like a, a good relationship between the businesses and whatever this you know, reforming agency is supposed to be it seems like it probably started from people just having to interact with each other and then they're like hey well we don't really have to be enemies here and then eventually it led to this and now of course you bring in money into the problem and whenever you do that um like you said yeah you these things but that was kind of the thing that i was interested in is because i feel like in when i think about this from a security perspective like we're trying to make the world more secure we're trying to prevent people from hacking into things and stealing your information and stuff like that right so i i was thinking like okay maybe these people are putting these antibiotics in chicken in meat because it's in some in some not to play devil's advocate but in some way people who wouldn't have access to that food or wouldn't be able to buy it at that price right yeah I think there there's good reason but the problem is so it's like a double edged sword right so you you kind of men overusing you're overusing antibiotics in both medicine and in food production if you want to be you want the security you want the certainty but by going for that certainty you actually have more uncertainty because now you create an environment for the super bugs to thrive in yeah um and same with like all the chemicals they put into the fish yes trying to protect it from getting sick trying to make it grow faster but by doing these shortcuts you harming the consumers without them knowing it um so a lot, of, a lot i think a lot of it is profit profit driven and a lot of it is trying not to get sued uh so it's, yeah so the the solution i'm thinking about is just having as much knowledge as possible because like before Yesterday I didn't know that wild caught salmon and uh farm salmon actually can be mislabeled so you can go to the supermarket paying twice as much the money for a wild caught salmon that turned out to be actually farm salmon it just mislabeled mm -hmm. and then you consume the same amount of chemicals and toxin without knowing it um it's kind of crazy cuz can really protect yourself. <laughs> I think that, yeah. Whoa, so how But do you, you make sure it's not mislabeled? What? I have that's, no idea. That's crazy. That's pretty crazy. But that's crazy to me. You where well, you, you just have to DNA test your salmon. <laughs> oh, oh, that's Every it. Okay. You buy your salmon, take a sample of it, take it to your lab. DNA test uh, it. Yes, I I wonder about that all the time. because you know I'm shopping I'm shopping and like the organic sweet potatoes are right next to the regular sweet potatoes and yeah they look slightly different I think I mean how do I know how do I know <laughs> yeah it's just a label that's different right I I didn't go to the farm I didn't see how they grow it There's some right I think for the for the fruits and vegetable is easier to tell because you see the whole package so usually the organic fruit and vegetable they actually like they smaller in size and they don't look as fresh like they look more real 
whereas the pesticide um, contaminated vegetable, they look really fresh and they there's no defect in the um, vegetable. Whereas you see like small defects like in the organic one. So you can tell with fruits and vegetable, but, but with salmon and stuff, it's just a fillet. So it's hard to tell. Like a farm fillet and the wild caught fillet look the same. There's such so a- you buy fish. What? I said there's such a philosophical gem in what you just said. What? And that the organic ones are usually, the organic fruit and vegetables are usually plain looking and not perfect and the imperfections of the organic fruit are noticeable whereas the ones that are filled with pesticides and um, other antibiotics are usually shiny looking you know very nice on the outside but obviously they have like these horrible qualities inside and i believe that that's like the projection that we we make in society is that everything is you know very perfect but, you know. Right, we try, we strive for perfection, but you, we actually harming ourselves because you cannot have perfect chicken and perfect beef that look super good without yeah. manipulating something. Because yeah. think about think about the the original chicken and the original beef when they first domesticated. No, they don't look like that. Just after thousands of years of domestication, they start looking like that. And even when I compare like the Asian free roaming chicken with the industrialized Western chicken, they look very different because the Western one looks more muscular, look more fat, has more fat, uh, it's bigger. Probably and it looks unhealthier because they, they have to stay in a cage all the time. You can't walk around. They spend all their life standing in a cage versus the free warming walking chicken. They look pretty healthy. They don't look as good from the outside, but from the inside, they're pretty healthy because they get to walk around not depressed, not being dumped into a ton of antibiotics. So yeah, so that, that, that go to like the meat product too. If it looks too good, then it's probably not good for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but the mis mislabeling thing is pretty concerning. I think for the fish, probably just go for fish that they cannot farm, like tuna or, I don't know. So, mackerel. go for those. Yeah, macro, yeah. Cheaper alternative. Um, and then next category, vegetable. Yeah, vegetable we talked about. You can have organic and inorganic. And then you can have vegetable with a bunch of pesticides in it. They were saying something, so also certain type of vegetable and fruit accumulate more toxins and pesticide inside it. I think they have like a list of that. Um, I don't know how accurate that list is, but it makes sense because when you think about banana, it has the skin, so it's protected from the pesticides versus like a strawberry, which seem like a sponge so it soak up all the pesticides inside it so when you're shopping it might not be good to buy in organic strawberries just had strawberries this morning <laughs> in organic yes organic? of course they're the cheaper kind of thing probably yeah they're way cheaper that's why people people still buy them and they look like twice bigger. So you think about it, like a normal natural strawberries don't look that big. But once you put pesticide in it, that kind of messed up the whole processes in the plants. So that process, these processes make it like twice or three times as big. 
imagine the same chemical inside your body and you're questioning why you eat so few stuff but you still have a lot of fat in your body and you still um you still gain weight because when it comes to the basic the very basic living processes life processes we are the same we we share the same processes with the bacteria so whichever stuff that mess up the bacteria can also mess you up So the more chemicals you dump into the system to make it perfect, to make it look nicer, to make it less sick, you also messed up the natural processes inside your own body. I think that's the key takeaway. Because yes, we're trying to make it more perfect. We're trying to make it more abundant. Because before industrialization, people die of starving. But now people are not dying of starvation. Well, there's still food starvation and it's a whole other issue, but that's less of a problem now with industrialization. But the problem now is because you get rid of that problem of starvation, you get more problem with chronic, chronic diseases like diabetes and cancer and you have outbreak of super bugs. So one other thing, what the other thing, um, because you just thought about it. So the, the deaths reported in Western societies arise in uh, throat cancer, mouth and throat cancer. And that correlates with the incidence of uh, acid reflux. When I was in Vietnam, I didn't have any acid reflux, but as soon as I came to the US, I started developing these acid reflux. And that's correlates with the rate of um, throat and mouth cancer. Yeah. So like oral <laughs> cancer. I need to make my throat now, I'm like, uh oh, coronavirus. But I do, I have noticed that actually, you know, uh, when I leave the U.S., it's like, I mean, I still remember like being in Ecuador and then like coming back and then all of a sudden just like feeling swollen. Right. So you have increased level of systemic inflammation just by being exposed to these chemicals and that just makes you more susceptible to cancers and diabetes and depression and all the type of uh, modern diseases hmm. uh, just by being in the country just being in certain country just being, by being in western societies you you're, well yes you're not dying of bacterial infection like in developing countries but because you get rid of all the bacteria now you have problems because the problem with acid reflux i think a very prominent microbiologist what he's trying to say is that if you get rid of a bunch of bacteria in the stomach so now the stomach not functioning properly it starts spitting out acid and you have acid coming out of the stomach more often and that affects the lining of your throat and your mouth so you have the region of the intestinal tract that most the closest to the opening, the upper opening of the stomach, being very susceptible to cancer, because you have all of these acid coming to contact with these cells, and same with same with colorectal cancer, the cancer of the large intestine and the rectum, because you you don't have a, di a diverse population of bacteria in your body versus colorectal cancer is very uncommon in developing, developing countries. So yes, you have higher you incidence of liver cancer and stomach cancer in developing country because of contamination, but now you get rid of those contamination, you start developing other diseases.
Oh, we shared a link that says that strawberry, strawberries are actually the number one with the most pesticides for fruit. So that is confirmed. Yeah, strawberry, don't eat inorganic strawberry if you can afford organic because it's pretty bad. Okay, how hard would it be to start growing strawberries? <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. Oh, what a so my one of my um, one of my former landlord. He's pretty healthy, and he he grows his own basil in his garden in Philadelphia. So it's doable. It's just gonna take more time. But if you start growing your own stuff, yes, you're gonna be healthier because you're not exposing yourself to these a bunch of chemicals you don't know about because. The government is so good at keeping the secret. Um, they said organic, but yes, is it 100% organic? No. There's still some contaminants in it because, okay, you have the organic farm right next to the inorganic farm. Okay, you can still have contamination of pesticides. And then if you use the contaminated water source for these farms, yes, you're still going to have contaminants in. Um, the fruit and the vegetable even though it's labeled organic but how much you can trust how much can you trust those labels just like with labeling okay wild caught salmon versus farm salmon okay how can you trust that it's just like in so the only say people are yeah. like oh this is super secure and you don't have to worry about any of these things and then like i literally went to a security conference like i don't know like a, a half a year ago this guy was a super big time hacker or whatever. He showed like the security flaws in software. Software made by security companies had the most vulnerabilities and bugs in it. It's like, yeah, you really, you really can't trust things. Um, yeah, because it kind of create an illusion of certainty, like with antibiotics. Okay, now I, I'm getting rid of all the bacteria. I should be fine. So when you buy organic food, okay, now I get rid of all the contaminants, I should be fine. But then there are some hidden chemicals in it that you don't know about. Right. So. Well, we got five minutes. Why don't we yeah. let's get a little bit of conversation. We probably should stop a little bit before, but yeah, let's just have some questions. Yeah. You said you have some questions or what? I was just gonna say like we take a second here of Gavin and Obi if you guys have questions and stuff. Okay, yeah. So like how did you become aware that farm salmon can be labeled as wild salmon? Well, because I just watched investigative videos of these. So there's a channel from the Canadian government. They actually do investigation series of all the food products. Uh, I'll send you the link. It's, it's called a marketplace. I think that's the name of the show. But they just go to places and investigate and have different labs in universities test these food source, which I think is super helpful because you never know, you never really know what's inside these things until you test it. Like the only reason that they know that the wild caught salmon, the salmon that label wild caught, that actually is farmed salmon is they did DNA tests on it and there's certain species that are more commonly farmed than other species. So they actually mislabel the species of salmon. Uh, it's pretty, yeah, I think science taking to the lab the only way for you to verify these stuff, not the label. Because yes, they're gonna put nice sounding label. Have you on actually, the actually looked into this? Have you, have you done, like you schemed up some like a way that you could verify this, like a like a real test that like regular everyday people could do? I mean, 
you can do a DNA test if you have a sequencer in the university, yes. Everyday people, you don't have a sequencer, so it's kind of hard. Um, if you want to do your own test. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the challenge. You can, is, it, is that even, is that even a, a possible thing? Because I feel like when we talk about solutions to these things, it has to be some way for people to either get resources to educate themselves on it or then to be able to perform the investigative discovery themselves. Uh, I think I think the solution is that you get more knowledge, but then how do you utilize that knowledge is right. difficult because if you cannot test it, how do you know, how can you be sure about the label? Like other commercial um, off the shelf, test my fish for poison things? I think it, it's going to take a lot of literature review. It's going to take a lot of searching on the internet to really dig down to what is actually clean, not just trusting the label because the label is misleading. The labels are just another way for this company to avoid getting sued and short shortcut the regulations which they created by themselves. <laughs> They create their own regulation. Uh, so I mean, you can drop iodine on your cottage cheese and it'll go yellow if it is fresh cottage cheese. So there's some, there are like some tests that you can do with different types of food, like things with sour cream, um, if it produces white flakes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's, it looks like that's kind of the, the solution is like to really just Google at home food quality test and then look up some, you know, re some resources that kind of show you stuff. Like for, for example, one of the things that is kind of interesting is fresh fish shouldn't have cloudy eyes and healthy gills are always a bright red color, which is weird because you would think that the fit, I would be kind of like put off by bright red gills. I'd be like, ugh, something's wrong with that. But um, Well, they, you know, they can also just make it red artificially. But I think that the eyes, the eyes is a good indication because you can't really make it clear artificially. Well, unless you take out the eye and put in another one. Um, yeah, the eye should have Yeah, a, so the eye, eye is a good indication, but I don't think the... the the gill is a good indication because they can fake that. They can just put some blood on it and make it red. Like some pig blood on it or something. Because you know they do do that, right? Because the beef, the beef can be expired and look like hell and they can put fresh blood on it. Just make it red like it's fresh, but it's actually expired beef. Mm -hmm. Or they can grind up so the, also the problem with like ground beef, the problem with ground beef is some supermarket might ground like the fresh beef with the already expired one. So now the final product looks fresh because you mix like an old meat with a new meat. Now it's just, so a lot of ground product, easy, easy to fake. Easy to fake the fakeness the freshness of the ground product, like ground beef, ground chicken. Because it can feel, be very- I feel like, um, yeah, no, that, that does happen, uh, food coloring and all that. I don't doubt that at all. I feel like at the end of the day, the best way is probably to taste uh, like really high quality salmon, wild caught salmon, and know what that tastes like. And, and, and I feel like that might be the only way yeah. yeah, so know, know how to tell a difference, right? Because you can yeah. tell. You can tell if you have had the real one before, but what if you never had a real one before? Then <laughs> you never know. Possible. That's possible. By the way, that, yeah. if you could send that link to that video, that would be cool. Nice to know people are actually Fun. out there uh, raiding the, the operations with cameras so we can see what's going on there. Because it's so easy. If a, if a company accidentally mislabels 
uh, wild and uh, farm salmon and they happen to double their profits like what's there's not there's not much reason for them to correct their mistake right so it's, it's yeah, yeah i think a lot of it is intentional um yeah yeah, yeah. So if you could send that video that'll be that'd be dope all right i'll send it that, yeah they have a lot of videos investigative videos from that channel so it'd be very informative yeah but go back to the solution yes i think being aware being aware that the system is not honest make you more careful instead of blindly blindly trusting the system instead of blindly trusting the organic label the wild caught salmon label you become more uh, curious you become more suspicious you shouldn't become too too suspicious that you're afraid of eating everything <laughs> from a supermarket but it gives you information and give you strategy to to solve these problems so like with the beef with the steak if you know that they're not very clear with the label with the okay maybe the steak is already tenderized they might punch a ton of holes in this beef and it has a ton of super bug super multi-resistant drug resistant bacteria inside the, the steak so if you know that and you're not sure if this, this piece of steak is not tenderized or not then it's better just to cook it's better just to cook all the steak well done or at least medium, medium rare, but not rare. Like cook it medium, so that the inside of the beef is cooked. Versus someone who not knowing about this, would just cook the the beef, like cook the steak rare, and then get bacterial infection. Um, well, I gotta. So that's one way. Of, like the way you cook might mitigate some of these effects. 